let me address the area of media recently we know what has been happening in ukraine we all seen how the western media they are covering this story they are following it bumper to bumper and then there was this narrative that eh can you see how they cover their story if it's in africa they don't go cover like that oh eh the western media is biased they are double standard they know they cover african story what don't do me is this our media is waiting for the west to come and do their job we have our own media have you ever heard the western media complain that African media is not covering their story. They don't do it. When their stories happen, they blow it up themselves. But somehow, Africa will feel like they owe it to us to come and cover our story. What is the job of our own media? Look at this story now. This story has been going on for, from what I understand, three, four days, five days going on. Ordinary bloggers, YouTubers are the ones covering the story. We are our media day. Hello guys and welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you're new to my channel, hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Summer. So in today's video, I want to talk about this uh, Ruth and uh, Jeremiah drama that has been going on. I already made a video in which I basically showed what I understand the story is. Like I was explaining in that video, I didn't even know anything about this whole thing until people started leaving comments and saying, oh Summer, what's your opinion about this uh, Ruth? Um, what about this thing? What's your opinion about this thing? And um, they did even, a lot of people didn't realize that they didn't even know anything about it. I started uh, searching on YouTube to find out what the story um, is. That was when I found out what I found out. And I realized that if I was to make a video addressing it, there was just so much information that I couldn't put all of that in one video. So I made that video and I tried to upload it last night. It didn't upload. I'm still trying to upload it. My computer is actually here by my side and it's saying about 68%. I don't know what the story is, why it's taking so long. But anyway, it's a very long video, about one hour, 40 minutes long. I basically compiled clips to show what the whole story is. So if you come across this and you don't know what the story is, you know, you can check that out to get an idea of what the story is so that you won't feel lost um, about what we're talking about. But basically, it's a story of a Nigerian woman that said she went to this particular church of a particular pastor and she said she went with four children long story short she walked away with only three she said one was missing apparently it's something that happened years ago but somehow somehow the story came back alive and people started getting involved and uh, the story was being shared everywhere and then the pastor allegedly got her arrested and she was living in Abuja she was moved from Abuja to a do state where that pastor's uh, church is and there is this one of our Nigerian ladies here on YouTube YouTube. when the whole story broke that the lady was about to be arrested she traveled all the way to Abuja to go uh, be there with the lady for support and help her fight and by the time she got to Abuja the lady who had already been moved from Abuja and she was moved, moved to Benin and this lady helped long story short that got that got that uh, lady a bail another tiny detail is that this lady is the lady with a uh, disability uh, on both legs okay she's in a, she uses a wheelchair that's just roughly because I don't want anybody that comes across not to understand what we're talking about roughly what the story is but the previous video hopefully I can upload it today this one I'm filming now is gonna be edited today please God I am I have it ready to upload tomorrow so uh, I just I'm just gonna say a few things that you know that are on my mind when I saw this uh, this particular when I got to know about this particular story so uh, first thing first I want to say is this um, I think it's something I'm gonna keep hammering when stuff like this comes up is those that believe that we should never talk about pastors once somebody is a pastor there are no go area don't even talk about them no matter what a so-called pastor is accused of doing we shouldn't talk about it but we can talk about exact same thing when somebody else does it this is a reminder that you can't be keeping quiet when somebody that claims to be a pastor is alleged or is accused sorry is accused of doing something because uh, nobody is above the law when so-called pastors are seen as untouchable a lot of things like this will keep happening i wanted to bring that because we keep seeing these things let me tell you guys you see why it, it it's very painful when you use your platform to address topics like this and some people may frown at it because you're talking about pastors. Don't forget that the people that these so-called pastors are accused of, you know, um, doing whatever injustice against are human beings. This time around, like, I don't know if this cannot open your eyes. I don't know what else is. This is a woman with four children. One is missing. But um, this lady, even with her disability and her life struggles, a lady like that can be dragged from Abuja all the way to Benin, like that. Some people say this, this is God speaking, but maybe this is God saying to you, it's no longer just about injustice against just the people. Injustice against a lady with all this stuff going on. A lady, 
I would call her vulnerable because she has a disability. That makes her vulnerable because she's not like you and I in a way that she's a human being, 100%. But in a way that there are some advantages we have that uh, being in a wheelchair, she may not have it. When it comes to advantages, when it comes to job opportunities, the opportunities to be empowered as a woman, to be independent, that disability affects her independence because sometimes she has to rely on people for a lot of stuff because of this, right? It makes her vulnerable, right? Because when it comes to economically, it puts her at a disadvantage. It then makes her even more vulnerable because she, she she's financially not in a position to fight for herself in situations like this. So when you think, don't address this topic, don't address this topic, and then you see this topic that you think we should shy away from, come and hit a woman like this in the face. If you feel like we couldn't we shouldn't speak when it was happening to everybody else when it happens to somebody like this i believe it's enough to force people to realize that we should be speaking and you know why it's good when we should why we should speak all the time if we speak all the time and we'll be able to have a system where injustice is not tolerated then when it came to a woman with disability like this the right uh, society would have been developed where she would have benefited from it they showed the video of where she lives and a lot of us that live abroad we know that people with disability, they are high priority in the Western society where the government will give them if they, if they don't have a job, if they don't have a job, because I have to emphasize there are some people that have disabilities that have amazing jobs. They earn more salary than some high bosses there. Computer gurus, business tycoon, CEOs of mega companies. I have to say that. But I'm saying those that find themselves in situations where, you know, they have to depend on the government. The government looks after them very well. But in Nigeria, you can see a situation where she found herself. Another area is this. There's this area of the story is like this, the story is like this. The Jeremiah, I saw a video where they were basically making it look like, from what I saw in that video, it's like so women come there and they drop their children, maybe because they are poor or whatever, they drop their child because they want the church to look after their child or whatever. Another narrative I have seen in one or two videos that they shared on their platform would be, you won't believe that I wouldn't know much about this Jeremiah guy. I honestly, people will not believe. It's not, it's not everything me and they put eye. You understand? If, it, if, the, if this saga was not even here, I wouldn't even... No, I wouldn't even know about the saga. I say a lot of pastors that I make video about, a lot of these videos are sagas. I don't know until people say, ah, did you not see this? Did you not see that? Then I'll go look into it. Now, I went to their platform to just get a feel of what it was, what's going on. And I saw they were making videos the way they were trying to claim that this woman came with somebody else, a stepdaughter or a relative anyways, or a cousin. And then she was the one that arranged with somebody to come and take her child to go buy noodles. Or they took the child away and she was trying to coba. It's like trying to put this uh, pastor in trouble. And maybe there was another narrative I saw somewhere where they want to make it look like this woman uh, uh, came with her child and got somebody to take that, uh, four children, sorry, came with four children. I got somebody to take one of them away. And then she's not claiming that it is this pastor and is asking, trying to extort money from the pastor or whatever. There's this other narrative that are being created. I'm not here to tell you what narrative you should follow or believe or whatever. What I'm basically doing is show you what the story is and I want to point at some inconsistencies or some areas that we should look at. And at the same time, at the end of the day, this story is here. So everybody should be aware. So I want to use my platform to help people to know about the story. Another area that I really want to address is this. Those that feel like, oh, maybe that woman is a scammer. And then some people that believe that the pastor, because according to that story, the woman herself said that uh, when she went to the police, they now told her that, why did you take your child? Why did you take your children there? That a lot of uh, women have been there and they, are, they lose their children. It's not the first time, second time, third time they are hearing stories like that. And she said that the pastor told her that this is her child. That this is her, that particular child, that he, his star is bright or something like that. And then she went inside. By the time she came out, the child was gone. So there's that other area of, okay, maybe they are using these children for ritual or something like that is happening. So no matter what narrative you want to believe, let me tell you, my thing is this, at the end of the day, the focus shouldn't be all this noise. The focus should be, where is that child today? They said it happened three years ago or two years ago. Where is that child today? That should be the focus. At the end of the day, finding that child and hopefully finding him alive should be the top priority right now. 
But somehow, this is the country we call Nigeria. It doesn't even seem to be. Before I forget, that, hopefully I will address the area of our media. Media. Let me remind myself that. Apparently, they said the woman is arrested because they believe that she's uh, uh, starting the public or whatever, whatever. They are not even, the police are arrested. They are not even talking about well, trying to find that boy. That's missing two or three years ago. Why is that not the focus? I saw a video on uh, Morin Badejo's channel where this guy that is in Edo State was saying that that church has CCTV cameras. All this, the church coming out to say this is the story and uh, all up and down there, whatever. Why can't they produce CCC camera to show where did this boy go? Where is he? Should be this story now is even coming back alive. They said this thing happened two, three years ago. A little boy is missing in that country. We know here, ping. It is not all over the news. It is not being publicized until YouTubers started bringing up this whole thing. If not, it would have been a story that nobody would even hear about. Let me address the area of media. Recently, we know what has been happening in Ukraine. We all seen how the Western media, they are covering this story. They are following it bumper to bumper, CNN, BBC. In short, every five minutes, there's an update. Every 10 minutes, there's an update. And then there was this narrative that, eh? Gee, you see how they cover their story? If it's in Africa, they don't go cover like that, oh. Eh? The Western media is biased. They are double standard. They know they cover African story. And I was beginning to actually begin to say, eh, not true. Can you imagine? They know they cover our story like this, oh. See the way they cover this story because it's in Europe. I sat back and I thought to myself, I said, do they actually owe us coverage of an African story? It's a question I'm asking. Do they really owe it to us to come to Africa and cover African story? Personally, I don't believe they do owe us that. Do you know what dawned on me? What dawned on me is this. Our media is waiting for the West to come and do their job. We have our own media. Why are they not doing their own job? Have you ever heard the Western media complain that Africa media is not covering their story. They don't do it. I've never seen them complain or waiting for African media to come and blow up their stories. When their stories happen, they blow it up themselves. But somehow, Africa will feel like they owe it to us to come and cover our story. What is the job of our own media? And, and be honest, this is what has come to my mind. Look at this story now. This story has been going on for, from what I understand, three, four days, five days going on. Ordinary bloggers, YouTubers are the ones covering the story. We are our media day. They are not paying a part. Another thing I've noticed is this. There is something I have, I, I may be wrong, but I have seen that our main media outlets in Nigeria, I don't know why, but I feel like they don't look, they don't, they don't look YouTube as rich anything. That's what I have noticed. That It seems that any story that is on the YouTube, YouTubers territory, sometimes I think they kind of ignore it like, I, 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 I feel like that. Why the Western media, you will see something a YouTuber, they will cover it 100%. But I feel like there's a part of them that feel like, wait, who be all these ones? They didn't go to journalism school. They didn't do that. They didn't do that. So sometimes they know they look us rich anything. <laughs> they know they really, excuse me, sorry. They know they look us rich anything. They forget that a lot of this time, the story is not about YouTubers or whatever. It is a, let the story stand on its own. It doesn't matter who brought up the story or let it stand on its own. Make it about the story, not about YouTubers right this story needs proper coverage i never hear pin from our big you know because see me whenever there's, there's a story out there i quickly run to people that i this big nigerian whatever that i trust because i'm okay let me hear what they would say to be sure because anybody can come on social media and be sharing whatever this particular story since i've been trying to gather to find out what the story is i don't see coverage by the kidney you will see western media there will be story of a missing child they will make a man their dedicated life ambition to dig this story, dig this story until they expose whatever. In short, sometimes I themselves they give sometimes pigeon English, sorry. Sometimes they are the ones that are the ones why I don't want to be I don't want to be using too much pigeon because some people that may be watching this may not understand pigeon English. You know, sometimes it's actually the press that will end up exposing stuff or giving the police clues because of how far they would dig up a story. There are people that have committed the worst crimes in America. Now press now you style. It's press that somehow expose them and the police will follow that. I have seen story of missing people. Police will go and watch the interview that the press, you know, conducted in the neighborhood or whatever. They are watching and looking body language. True. What is our press doing? This boy, this boy's story should be all over the news. I never see him in the news. That is somebody's child. Oh, Ukraine, Europe, the Western world, they are covering the story bumper to bumper. Yeah, they didn't cover African story. I have come to tell myself the truth. They don't owe it to us to cover our story. We cover our stories. We should cover our stories. 
We should not be waiting for Western media to come and do the job of our own media. Even the answers that uh, CNN that came and covered small, she be some of our people say propaganda. That's another thing. Because when they come and cover our story, the people will say they are spy, they are Western spy who send their message. It's none of their business. Uh, uh, da, da, da. You see that this life, sometimes, what do we even want? Coming back to this story, I've, I've not seen our media covering a child, a little child has not been seen for two, three years and is not in the main media. They say my mama carry him. They say it's his mother that took him or whatever. Till today, the mother still does not have her child. So she took her own child and gave to somebody until today. And then how can a woman come with four children and she decided, okay, tum -bum, tum -bum, let me use this one to do whatever, Sarah. Sarah for, for people. That's another area that came to my mind. This story should be big. An innocent little boy is missing. And everywhere they quiet. No only YouTubers, they carry the story. In the other one that I shared, I showed what role uh, Bisola played in this this woman she sacrificed her time her money and energy and everything she lives in lagos she traveled to abuja when she heard that this woman was being arrested when she got to abuja she was going from police station to police station she couldn't find this missing lady she then got into a flight she now heard that the lady was being taken to benin city she joined a flight from abuja to benin city getting to benin city she now heard that the lady was in this flight she just got out of she waited and filmed every single thing that she saw she was still in Benin. The next thing she heard that the lady has been moved from Benin to worry where that pastor is. Let me tell you, that woman, she doesn't know the Ruth from anywhere. She never met her before, just the story on social media. She took it upon herself to use her platform to expose this story this much. Well, that's what you call somebody using their platform well. I've said it before, those that think uh, we should all be frying puff puff on YouTube. We don't all have to fry puff puff. I've said it before, puff puff is delicious, amazing yummy whatever you want to call it but justice is also sweet so as uh, so people are frying puff puff let those that are fighting for justice also fight for justice so that when people eat puff puff they can eat it with peace of mind they can drink water and drop cup so don't underestimate other people's i've said it to people who come here and say hey, all this controversial topic you are addressing your mate are uh, uh, teaching how to cook your mate are this, this, this there are roles we have to play look at somebody like bisola look at her she took it upon herself and she used her platform thank god she has a platform which she decided to use well i'm just using that to show you people to show people how powerful it is to have a platform there is so much we can do with our platforms what about maureen badejo she played an amazing role in this as well i don't want to go into that because in the previous video i you know there was so much details in that previous video you will see how much a lot of youtubers and bloggers what's his name there's one they call prof x there is uh, even the niger craziest a lot of platforms use their platform bumper to bumper follow the story kept on going let me tell you guys i don't believe that if bisola didn't take it upon herself and follow them bumper to bumper i don't know why i don't believe that ruth will be free today i don't know why i don't believe it that social media is let me tell you what some people of these people do like another thing you have to realize to arrest somebody all the way from abuja move her to benin oh Somebody uh, on a more a channel, I think the person rang in, you know, I didn't watch the whole video, but the aspect that I watched, there's somebody that said something that um, if God does not punish, let me say some people, if God does not punish some of these people and the injustice in Nigeria, that means God needs to apologize to Sodom and Gomorrah. Some people have done or are still doing in that Nigeria. It is nothing in comparison to the wickedness or whatever people said was in Sodom and Gomorrah. A woman with disability can be picked up like that she has nobody you think if she was the daughter of buari or the daughter of somebody let me put it like that you would you they would just pick her like this if bisola didn't use her platform to make her the daughter of somebody that is what bisola did bisola made her somebody by taking this matter bumper to bumper you think if she didn't play that role you think the root would be free i don't know why i personally do not think she'll be free what you may end up hearing in years to come is like yeah there were one, one woman no oh, that had disability and one day yeah one day some people came and took her and she was never seen again it did happen and as bisola was explaining they didn't even identify themselves as police officers they didn't have uniforms nothing you think another area think uh, there are a lot of areas you know think about these things Nigerian police will just come and be extraditing somebody from Abuja to worry just like that. There is a process that is involved in that. There is a process. A lot of you know what that process involves. A lot of you know what that pro If you think I'm lying, go and tell the police to help you arrest somebody from Abuja and bring to you in Benin. In short, they, they can't even tell the police to help you arrest somebody from Ogoloto to Majidu in Lagos. And, and, and you come back and give me feedback. What is involved in doing that? It is still oppression of the poor. 
this whole thing is oppression of the poor. We saw it when uh, Suleiman was able to get Balogu that is living in Abuja. Suleiman is in Aochi. He was able to get him detained and locked up in Abuja. This is what we're seeing again with this Jeremiah story. And so people think we should not talk about pastors. Think about the process. Oh, like this. She was, they, she was moved. Qua, qua, qua. She was moved like this. Pa, pa, pa. They have moved her like this. And this is what we call a country. And from what they are saying, they are, they are arresting her for extortion. They are not even saying we are, we are trying to investigate her missing child. Personally, what I see, I may be wrong, but I look at it. What I see is a process of eventually trying to clear the name of Jeremiah. I'm not going to come here and say Jeremiah did this or not. no did here. But there is something about a child missing in a so-called church. And then they are arresting this man. And from what I see, all they're trying to do is clear his name rather than try to find the missing boy. This is the problem about the rich and the poor in Nigeria. This story here is heartbreaking. A lot of you may have heard about it, but I really wanted to lend my voice to it because I believe that some people that may not have heard of it, I didn't know about it until some of you started leaving comments and say, ah, what is your opinion about this Ruth story? I started trying to find out about it. I think another reason why I didn't find out about it because the mainstream media didn't cover the story. They didn't cover the story. So this is the country we call Nigeria. And I hope that something like this and seeing what Bisola and a lot of people use their platform to achieve in this Ruth story is enough for people to actually begin to realize that this uh, platform is not a joke. It, there's power behind it. To people to begin to respect this idea of people using their platform to speak up. I hopefully this is something that people can get out of this. You think if it, if it was not the era of social media that this route now they go see her brake light. Nobody go see her brake light. She'll be somewhere now roasting in a so-called jail, jail or cell or whatever they call it. Just because she is a nobody. She has no money. She can be picked up or whatever. Okay, now, think about this thing. A woman said I entered this church and my son disappeared. Uh, and the church pastor, the pastor of the church trying to uh, clear his own name. And then among the two of them, you feel that somebody needs to be arrested. And you think it is a woman that needs to be arrested. You didn't, why is it that they didn't think, I'm not telling them how to do their jobs. I'm just saying, how did they come to that conclusion? That it is not the pastor that needs to be arrested to come and explain where is the missing son. It is a uh, missing child. But it is the woman that is missing her child that needs to be arrested. I'm not saying they should not do an investigation. But, and the sad part is that I have not heard where they said they are investigating to find that boy. That should be a priority right now. I'm hoping you guys watching this story. Whatever way you can share this story. As in, post about this story on your Facebook or your Instagram or whatever. Let's put this news out there. There is, no matter whatever, there is a missing boy. If the mama go hide down, let's find out. If it is uh, Jeremiah that did something, let's find out. If it's not Jeremiah, somebody else in his building did something. Something needs to be found out about where is that boy right now. And I, I believe that should be top priority. I, I don't know. It's a very sad story. Sometimes when you think you've heard the worst, something else happened and you're like, what? Is this how it, we're going to, how, is this how it's going to continue? Now so we go the day, now so Nigeria will continue to be, that the poor will continue to suffer. Only the rich will continue to oppress the poor. Is this? Anyways, um, that's how I feel about this story. And uh, as always, whatever your opinions are, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. Um, and with that, I'm going to say thank you for watching. Until the next time, guys. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.